Which laptop is best for mechanical engineering students? If you're struggling with this question, you better keep watching. <laughs> Hey, my name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. Today I want to walk you through how I would choose a laptop as a mechanical engineering student, which features to look out for and why. And I'll also give a couple of examples in the end. I base this on my own university experience and also consulted with a very tech-savvy current mechanical engineering student. So let's get into it. The first thing I want you to watch out for is actually not a technical feature, but university deals and discounts. Some universities have a partnership with a laptop seller where they can get a certain laptop model for a lower price or sometimes companies themselves offer special deals for students. So definitely check with your university and search a bit around the internet to see if there's any current student discounts going on. Now let's talk about size. <laughs> you don't want to buy too small of a laptop because you're going to be on the laptop a lot. 15 inch is probably the best. Now at my university the tables were pretty small so I actually got myself a 13 inch a then book but it sometimes was a struggle to work on CAD models where you have to stare at your screen for hours and see a lot of detail while also keeping an overview so I would probably go more for like a 15 inch than a 13 inch. <laughs> now onto the operating system. Make sure you get a Windows, not a Mac. And I'm saying this while reading my script of a MacBook because most programs that you're gonna have to install on your computer for engineering school are not gonna be available for Mac. So most CAD programs, most simulation programs, random other software, and also all of the instructions are always pretty much only available for Windows. So if you do get a MacBook, you're gonna have to install Windows on it which is a crime obviously, so just don't do it. Now, as soon as you're done with engineering school and you have a work laptop with all the programs you need, then you can do what I did and buy yourself a MacBook if you want, but not before that. Uh -uh. And if you're into Linux as an operating system, then you're not watching this video anyway because you don't need my help in forming your opinions. <laughs> All right, let's move on to storage. You want to go for minimum of 500 gigabytes because the programs that we need to download are really big. <laughs> and if you want to be a little extra, you can also care about the kind of storage device. So here you want to go for an SSD, which is a solid state drive, instead of an HDD, which is a hard disk drive, because it's generally faster. But is also going to be more expensive. So as you're going to learn in engineering school, when it comes to technology, there's always a trade-off between different features. Now let's talk RAM, random access memory. This is your temporary storage for the files that you're currently working on. Every time you shut down your computer, this storage is being deleted. And it's really important for multitasking, which you're going to have to do a lot as an engineering student or later as an engineer. And I don't mean multitasking with your mind. <laughs> always want to be focused on one task but on your computer you're gonna have a lot of programs and files open at the same time you might have your CAD programs like AutoCAD or SolidWorks or something and then a bunch of Excel files and some huge PDFs probably that your professor gave you maybe MATLAB and then obviously a browser with a gazillion tabs of Google search results and different forums that you're using to try to figure out how to do the task that you're supposed to do. So to make sure your laptop doesn't behave like this, you want to get at least 8 gigabytes or even better 16 gigabytes of RAM. Then for your CPU, your central processing unit, there's basically two large producers of these. You have Intel and AMD. You can't go wrong with either one, just make sure it's new enough generation. They use the same numbering system so you want to get at least an Intel i5 or a Ryzen 5 and if you can go for an Intel i7 or above or Ryzen 7 or above. The higher the number the newer the generation. And for your GPU, your graphics processing unit, you just want to make sure that there's a dedicated graphics card instead of one that's integrated into the CPU. The graphics card mostly matters for your computer-aided design work or shortcut. It doesn't have to be on a gamer level, but it should be decent. And 
as long as you go for a decent CPU, the GPU will usually also be decent. Just make sure that it's a dedicated graphics card. Now let's talk about the screen. The screen resolution should not be too low because that's not fun to look at for hours and hours and hours. So I would preferably go for full HD, but not higher than that because that's not necessary and it's just gonna eat up your battery and processing power, which we need for other way more important things. And personally, I recommend no touch screen because that means you're gonna have a glass screen, which is very reflective and gets dirty. And if you wanna work outside, like on the campus or something, it's gonna be especially hard to see. Now, the battery life. This one should be as long as possible. It cannot be too much, basically, <laughs> but that of course gets expensive. This is because the programs you need, like CAD, need a lot of battery power. And you might not always have a power outlet available where you're working, for example, on campus or on the train, or you might forget your charger at home <laughs> and you don't wanna run out of power immediately. Moving on to the ports. Full HDMI is handy to lift that. Hashtag no dongle life because you will often need to connect to university projectors for presentations and they generally have HDMI. They might have other things, but that's the safest bet, I'd say. But of course, you can also carry a dongle with you. Then you want to get a good old classic USB A because there's a very high chance you're gonna have to connect to some older devices for project or something that will have USB-A, but maybe not anything newer than that. And a nice to have is a USB-C charging port because then you can just borrow anyone's charger and not rely on the brand specific charger. Now, finally, let's talk about accessories. Do yourself a favor and get yourself a mouse. <laughs> Ideally, a Bluetooth one that doesn't require any stick in the laptop because that's easy to forget. And then you have a mouse with you, but no way to use it. And it's kind of really annoying. Happened to me plenty of times, so don't do that. But a mouse is really important, especially for many of the CAD programs. You just cannot operate it with a mouse pad because you need like the little rolly wheel in the middle. <laughs> and the more buttons you can program to your own preferences, the faster you're gonna be moving moving around your CAD software. And if you can, buy yourself a second monitor for working at home because that will make CAD work much easier and more enjoyable. And one note in general, you want to think about function over style when choosing your laptop. For example, it might look nice to have the top of your screen clear of any webcam, but it looks really awkward if you're being filmed from below and you can always tell if I'm typing in a meeting and that's just no bueno. So style is important, yeah, yeah, I know, but function matters even more. All right, and finally, I just wanted to share a couple of example laptops. Really, what I would do is just go to any laptop comparison site and play around with the features I just went through. But here are some of the most popular laptops that I've seen among engineering students. First of all, the HP ZBook Studio, and then of that, whichever is the latest generation. <laughs> Then another really popular one is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1. Again, whichever is the newest generation of that. And then I had an Asus ZenBook, which also always has a new generation. And I was really happy with it. It was the best performing one at the store that I went to, so that's why I got it. And my work laptop is a Dell Precision 5540, which is also pretty good. It's just really heavy. <laughs> so yeah, if you care about that, then maybe also look at the weight of the laptop. Now, obviously the purpose of this video was to talk about the best laptop for engineering and you can always downgrade if needed because if you're getting all of these features, it's gonna be pretty <laughs> dang expensive laptop, which as students, that's why you gotta look out for those deals at university because there you can usually get really high spec laptops for a lot cheaper. But uh, a laptop doesn't make an engineer, it just makes you less likely to freak out. <laughs> So it helps a little bit with the patience on a CAD project that may or may not load when you want it to. So let me know what other questions you have about engineering school and working as an engineer. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Thomas just picked the best one. <laughs>